I don't know about everybody else, but uh, the beginning of the pandemic really sent me off the deep end. It was my second year at UC Santa Barbara, and I was pursuing a double major in global studies and political science. And so in a panicked series of events, they sent us home and moved classes online. And during my quarter at the UC, my parents' living room campus, I happened to be in a class on American media. As we analyzed the politics surrounding the pandemic and the upcoming elections, I fell deeper and deeper into what felt like a never ending spiral. After that quarter, I dropped out of school and got a job at a tap room in my small town where I watched the politics unfold in real time. I watched people's confusion and pain drown, drown out logic and reason on both sides of the aisle. It didn't matter. And then I'd go home and hide from the world, burnt out from a day of begging people to wear a mask and fending off people who thought that it was my fault that there was a global health crisis. I felt like a puppet on a string, dragged around by anxiety, fear, and uncertainty. Life was happening to me, and I had no power to stop it. I lived in this straight-up survival mode for six months, unable to see more than five minutes ahead of me, let alone dream about my plans for the future. When I was laid off in November, my mom finally intervened and she said, all right, I've let you have your moment. I didn't want to tell you what to do, but I'm pretty sure we can both agree that this is not working out for you. So unemployed, not in school and struggling to find direction, I signed up for the rest coaching course. And I want you to imagine what it would be like if there was like TV static constantly playing in the background of your day-to-day -day existence. And if you really listen, you can find it and you can hear it. And sometimes it demands to be heard. It drowns out every other sound in the room. But most of the time, you just kind of learn to ignore it, like the humming of your refrigerator. And then imagine if one day that sound just stopped and you realize you've been living your entire life with a lousy signal. That's what it felt like when I started using rest. Nothing about my world has changed. Everything was just as uncertain as it's ever been, and it still is, but my perspective is no longer hopeless. I think a lot about this quote, which says, every day you have two choices, evolve or repeat. It seems simple, but for six months, and also long before that, I kept choosing the latter. Now, I returned to Santa Barbara, and I'm on a new path as a psychology and brain sciences major. I dropped political science. I said goodbye to that. I wanted to better understand the work I was doing and the work I had done for myself with REST. I used to think that public policy was the only way to change society for the better. That grueling battle over the minds of the people was the only option we had. But as a coach, REST inspired me to change my major in my fourth year because I realized the large scale change has to start with an individual. As a person, self-growth is no longer a strenuous process with no obvious path. Instead, I find myself taking quantum leaps into clarity. I find myself looking at the things that used to be my biggest fears and burdens, and I have an appreciation for what they were and the knowledge that they are no longer a part of my present reality. And the growth isn't done. Every day that I keep looking back and processing what has happened to me in my life through my childhood, I get a little more in touch with who I am. So my name is Leela, and I believe that the world can be full of scary things, but I also believe we have the power to pre create beautiful things in their place. All we have to do is shift from a mindset of anger and fear to one of passion and fulfillment. Rest makes that as easy as closing your eyes and dreaming of possibility. And that is something I believe that everyone deserves to experience.